Sometime later, they had a bunch of Japs came back, got back behind the lines. They said, I don't know how many, quite a few. And they sent me and some other guys up in there hunting for them. Well, I found Sparrow myself because I come to a little field and I told the guys, wait a minute here. I said, I'm going out there and look around first. Well, I got out there and Jap started to jump up and run in there. And of course, I had a Browning automatic and I was young and, young and dumb too. So I just dropped to one knee and went to work with my Browning on those Japs that were running across the field, you know. And But there was a machine gun across the field that I couldn't see, and he's the guy that got me. So I, I took a bullet in the chest or whatever around here and took my nipple off and took my finger off at, at that time. How many Japanese were running when you fired? Well, there was six or seven that, that was running in front of me there, and I was working them over with that Browning automatic. But then I got knocked down and uh, got some of the bullets hit my gun too and knocked the gun away from me. I remember and I had a lot of ammunition around my belt and I hit that and shot that stuff up, of course. And then I took one bullet in my chest and one in my hand, but I, I thought at the time, I thought it was in me, but it wasn't. But I got in my belly and I laid there while well, they were shooting around me, of course, knocking down, throwing dirt on me and everything, but they didn't hit me again. Then I finally got my knees under me and I dove in the brush and I yelled to the others, hold it, I'm coming through. And so I got out of there. They got me in a Filipino hammock and they carried me out of there then. I remember that. Did you lose consciousness or were you awake the whole time? No, I was awake the whole time. What was that like, getting shot in the chest? I mean, what did that feel well, like? Well, it wasn't too much pain. It almost just felt like I got stabbed with a, a knife or something. You know, It wasn't too much pain, except that the blow had hit so hard that it had made me bleed from my lung or something. You know. It didn't get inside, though. It just... The, the shock of it caused that, and so they got me in the Filipino hammock and they carried me out of there. I can remember yet when they finally got me out there where they got me in a weapons carrier and they were, it was, I was leaning in the corner and they were taking me to some kind of a hospital and and I then they come with an ambulance or something and they were going to put me in and I said, how far is it? I can remember asking the guy. He's only a couple of miles. He said, oh, then I'll stay right here because I was leaning in the corner because I was starting to feel it, you know. <laughs> so they hauled me in there. Yeah, I can remember when they, when I come to, three, four o'clock in the morning and, they, and I talked to an orderly there. And I said, I understand they send that message home about this and I don't want that to happen. Uh, he says, too late, it's already been done. You mean about you being wounded? Yeah. But what was the reason you didn't want your family back home to know? Oh, I didn't want them to know that they got hit because they'd be worrying about too much, you know. So I just, I didn't want it to happen, but they did. You know, I can remember my wife telling me afterwards that the ambulance, or the With the uh, Western Union, it was something like that. But they come there with a with a car. Anyway, it was pulled into where my wife was living with by her by her folks there in the little house I had there, and she said they pulled in just then. My dad was coming by, and she said he saw that, and so he come in there, and, they, and she had that telegram, and she. She said, that's the first time I've ever seen your dad ever cry. But anyway, I didn't, I never told my wife about, I, I tried, I, my, this hand, the only thing that was sticking out of this hand was, was my, these here fingers, you know, and I couldn't hardly write, so. 
I remember there was a Ross Red Cross woman who was going to write a letter for me, and I said, I don't think you should do that. And I, I'll, I'll try to make something to send to my wife, and I did. And I told her I got hit in my right hand, and that's all I ever told her. But when I got home the first time, he, I took my shirt off. He, <laughs> she had a surprise there. And, well, she didn't know what happened. She didn't know that was there, and she said, what the heck is that? <laughs> Well, then I told her, of course, that my, my small little finger on my right hand was shot off, and, and this other one was cut right to the moon, the second one. But otherwise, my think, these two fingers were good yet. And this was all from the, the Japanese machine gun fire? Yes. When you started to fire your BAR at the Japanese soldiers, sir? Did you go for any cover, or you were out there in the open firing? I, I was in the wide open, down on one knee, holding that gun up because they're a, it's a 14-pound gun. So I was just bracing that and, and shooting, shooting everything in sight. And so when you, you were firing at the Japanese soldiers in the field, at what point did you notice uh, the Japanese machine gun nest across the field from you? No, I did. I didn't know anything about that until something hit my hand, and then I could see that smoke rolling out of the brush there. But I couldn't see that thing. I fired in there too. I remember that, but I didn't know what I shot there. Who knows? Things are happening pretty fast. So even after your hand was wounded, you continued to fire. Oh yeah, I was. I never thought about that anymore. I guess I didn't feel it.